Good evening and thank you for joining us on this Tuesday night. Russia's revenge continues as its missiles rain down from the skies across Ukraine for the second straight day. Air raid sirens sounded during the early morning rush hour as residents took cover in bomb shelters and subway stations. Multiple cities across the country were hit with fresh rockets and kamikaze drone attacks as the death toll continues to rise. Russia's military appeared to be targeting residential areas including a school and a medical facility in the contested city of Zaporizhia. President Biden and other G7 leaders held an emergency meeting today and pledged to stand firmly with Ukraine. And tonight we're learning details about the sophisticated weapons that could be headed to Ukraine. CBS's Charlie Daggett starts us off tonight from inside Ukraine. Good evening, Charlie. Good evening to you, Nora. In his nightly address moments ago, President Zelensky said Russia launched another 28 missiles into Ukraine today. On the same day, he pleaded with the G7 for modern air defense systems, saying the key element of Russia's terror, rocket strikes, will cease to work. Ukraine's defense ministry says more than half of at least 75 cruise missiles fired in the onslaught were intercepted, shot down like this video is said to show. But while the Kremlin attacks civilian targets, many of its troops are in retreat on the battlefield. We headed south, where Ukrainian forces smashed through Russian defenses in the Kherson region. Not much more than a week ago, this whole area was under Russian control. Claudia Vladichenko told us how she tried to shield her six-year-old daughter, Margarita, who's blind and cannot walk or talk, from the sounds of explosions and gunfire. She was scared, but she got used to it eventually, she said. I taught her how to smile. Russian troops took over the local high school as their headquarters. The holes blown in the concrete, scorched walls and smashed windows speak of the battle that took place when Ukrainian forces closed in. It's almost as if they didn't see it coming. Two Russian armored personnel carriers torched where they stood, one still bearing the Z of the Russian army. Inside, Svetlana Reznichenko said she cried seeing her school turned into a filthy barracks. Maybe our government can help us rebuild and we can meet our students at the entrance again, she said. In another nearby village, a tearful Oksana described how relieved she was to see the faces of Ukrainian soldiers. Under Russian ownership for seven months, long enough to start thinking their home would never be home again. Yesterday's bombardment has had a huge impact on the civilian infrastructure here, cutting off electricity and water in parts of the country. Residents have been asked to conserve energy, shut down businesses early, and even stock up on water. Nora. Charlie Daggett, thank you for your superb reporting.